and there's a lot of history to this ancient Saxon village which I'm going to explore over the next half, or, half an hour or so and uh, before we do that I'll just enjoy walking down to what you could call the High Street or Main Street of Lidford there's some lovely old properties down here mixed in with a few newer ones as you can see from the left the old and the new seem to cohabit quite well side by side but the old buildings are what gives the village and all Devon villages their kind of special charm and appeal This one on the right, Castle Reach. And these look quite old on the left here as well, with the old cobbled, cobbled stones in front. This looks like it was an old barn of some sort. You can see the wooden lintel across the top and up there is uh, an area where perhaps it was a hay barn or something where they could offload from a cart into the barn, a lovely barn. Now a garage by the looks of it. We get a lovely, absolutely gorgeous house, or two houses, or perhaps even three, next to it. Here we have what's known as the Old Chapel. And it's now been turned into a private house. And uh, don't you just love the, uh, the circular window at the top? Absolutely delightful, beautiful. So that's the old chapel. And here we have a, a relic of our early telecom days. A telephone box. And it looks like it's still working. Most of them now are antiques. And here on the right we've got a place called St Nicholas's Hall. Again, rather grand frontage to it. and what looks like a sundial in the garden on the left. And on the right here it says, if you can see on the on the sign, it says Saxon Town Banks. And you can see that these were Saxon fortifications or mounds. Uh, a few moles seem to have decided to call it home as well. Um, there are more of these the other side of the church when we get there. So I'm on the edge of the village here of Lidford and the name comes from the Saxon which is from the name Hilda Ford or Hild. This means to cover or we'll put a lid over and it refers to the river Lid when it 
is concealed under the slate at the Lidford Gorge, which we're going to visit a little bit later. So what we're looking at right here is a Saxon fortification. And you can see these mounds uh, at different places in and around the village. And they had good reason to want to fortify Lidford because um, it was a place of quite strategic importance back in those times. It was established in the 9th century by the Saxon kings and they built fortifications to protect it from the Vikings, the Danes and the Cornish. If you think about the work that went in to build these mounds, the village people must have realised how important it was with this impending threat from the Scandinavian countries. And so the effort went in to build these fortifications, simple mounds of earth from which they could perhaps have put up wooden stakes or stockades of some sort. I'm not a historian familiar with the the period, but at least it gives them uh, an upper advantage point to try and repel raiders. So I'm now on my way to the Sacred Spring and we've got wild irises, buttercups, many other spring flowers still hanging on right now and it's a lovely little pathway down to this spring and can you hear the bird sound and look at these I'm not sure whether they're wild or cultivated roses looks like they're cultivated still giving us a wonderful picture nevertheless and look at the thickness of that trunk and stem with the ivy around it lovely you know a professional florist couldn't do a better job could they Irises, I think they're irises. Lovely trees. A lovely late spring day. So I'm heading down to the spring now. Just look at these wonderful flowers on the left here once again a picture of colour sounds like there's a primary school up ahead there somewhere anyway I'm trying to I'm moving away from that sound source towards the sacred spring. And here it is, we've got some information to have a look at. It says Lidford was an important Saxon town which has been had been fortified during the reign of King Alfred in 871 to 899 against the invading Danes and was of equal importance to Exeter, Barnstable and Totnes. As well as being an administrative centre, Lidford had its own mint for the provision of currency. That's so interesting, we'll come back to that. The track which crosses this site was 
was one of the principal entrances through the town bank into the township. So there would have been a gap in the bank, which was uh, what we've looked at. Uh, the nearby spring was undoubtedly one of the main sources of water for its inhabitants and was continued to and has continued to provide a supply of clean water over the centuries. Phenomenal. In 2006, Lidford Parish Council decided to restore the spring and the surrounding area. This work was carried out in 2008. The spring adjoins woodland and open pasture. It overflows into the tributary of the River Lid, which runs through nearby Lidford Gorge, owned by the National Trust, and we are heading that way. And here it is, and you can see it's just coming out of the hillside there, and it's got a stone kind of path for it to flow down towards the tributary. And I'm just going to brush some of this into my hand and taste it. kind of soft and smooth taste to it. And there it is disappearing down. Quite wonderful. And hopefully when we when I start to look at some holy wells in Devon, I'll be doing a bit more of this seeing water coming out of the ground. And the significance to the peoples of those times. I'm now starting a little woodland walk from the spring uh, in the direction of the castle. And here, I've arrived at the castle. So the castle, as well as being a stronghold, was also a prison and also a mint. And in, some, and in uh, the late 10th century, some of the minted coins were found in Scandinavia, which kind of links up with the, the fact that these, this part of Devon was raided by the Danes and the Vikings, and they must have taken these coins back with them. Well, that's what I'm assuming. Uh, and uh, they formed a part of what was called the Danny Geld payments. This was sort of protection money. 
uh, made to the Vikings by the Saxons. So in fact, uh, the Saxons paid the Vikings and the Danes to stop plundering and destroying. It's kind of a trade-off. The Normans, after 1066 con conquest, built the castles because there's two. This is the stone version, but there's another ring, ring road or ring, ring works, triangular in in enclosure as well with ramparts, which I'll show you near the near the church, where ramparts and ditches were actually uh, erected as well, and it could well be. They use some of this as a granary. And Lidford flourished in the Middle Ages, also as an administration centre for the Royal Forest of Dartmoor. And of course, if we look at Dartmoor today, there's not much in the way of a forest on it. It was kind of deforested. But at this, in Saxon times, it was a Royal Forest for hunting. And uh, the courtroom was built in 1195, and we're looking at the freestanding two-story tower, uh, which was rebuilt in the 13th century. And then during the English Civil War, it was used as a military prison by the Royalists. But by, er by the early 19th century, it was abandoned. So I'm going to go up and have a look inside, see what we can see. Wow. time. A very substantial building indeed. And I can't imagine what it would have been like to be imprisoned in this tower. Presumably down the bottom there's a spiral staircase which is blocked off. As you look at the walls you can see where the beams would have been to emphasise the, the different floors. It's really remarkable. safety put in here because when you get up a little higher you can really see that and of course it would have been a wonderful vantage point right over the countryside and you could put your fire your arrows out of these slit windows and would look out some centuries. It looks on the left hand side that that was probably a fireplace of some sort uh, on that particular level. So that's all there is. Let's take a look at this ceiling. I mean that's a work of art in itself isn't it? It's like a mosaic. back down.
So looking down to the bottom. It really is quite deep down there. And although we can't go down, here over this side once again if I look down unfortunately some people have thrown litter down there I really don't I can't believe the mentality of some people but I'm not sure that that is some sort of entrance might have been a little window. I can't see any light coming through. It's difficult to tell from here, but it was clearly a cell and uh, it must have been absolutely hell down there. As I come around the side here, through this grill, possible, I suppose, that this was a large cell where there would have been groups of people. And the one I just looked at was a smaller cell. Uh, it's quite extraordinary and really, you wouldn't want to be incarcerated here. It says Lidford Castle is a remarkably well-preserved medieval prison and courthouse built in 1195 and later enlarged in 1238 by Richard, Earl of Cornwall. Lidford has been an important town since the Saxon period when it was protected by defensive banks surrounding the older part of the village. These substantial earthworks are still visible. In the field to your left are also the remains of a Norman ringwork, ringwork castle, which we'll look at in a bit. So, St. Petrol Church would have originally been a wooden structure and it was founded in 639 AD. And apparently the original structure was burnt down by the Vikings in their raid of 997 AD. My goodness. What a terrifying time to live in this area with Danes and Vikings marauding and coming up our rivers. So this would have been originally a wooden structure. St. Petrock was born in South Wales but associated, was associated with Padstow in Cornwall and was a Christian saint. So the church was later rebuilt and in the Norman Gothic style uh, 
and it was enlarged in the 13th century and the tower was added in the 15th century. So I want to go inside and take a look because apparently the ends of the pews are something to behold. So some of the church information here gives us a bit more information. It says the St. Petrock was the abbot of Bodmin and made missionary journeys around Dartmoor, Exeter and North Cornwall. As I've already said, the wooden church was burnt down by the Danes in 997 and then rebuilt in stone. It says portions of the west wall and north and south wall are still in their original positions and their coin stones have never been disturbed. There is so much information here which I'm not going to read out to you but just let you see the spectacular screen that's in front of me. Uh, I think it was called a rood when I looked at the, the church in Ufcom, which is on a previous video, but it's, this, this one's not as long, but it's just as beautiful, if not more so. And there's the chancel with just a lovely stained, stained glass window. At the end, a wonderful vaulted roof. because it's a bit dark in here I'm going to go to the back of the church where there's some light but as I walk down past these pews every one of these pews is beautifully carved and they are supposed to be all different I'm going to have a closer look at one or two when we get into a bit more of a lighted area here. And there you can see the detail of this end of pew. It's absolutely spectacular. Let's have a look at another one. So they have, all have figures and ornate carving around the exterior. And they're all different figures. Aren't they just absolutely wonderful? And this is the belfry. Once again, a lovely stained glass window, and you can see the ropes going up through the roof there to the bells in the tower. It's a truly wonderful church. And just look at that ceiling and the view through the screen to the chantry and the stained glass, stained glass window at the end. And these pew ends are just, wow, blow you away. And this gorgeous chair.
So there we have St. Petrox Church in Lidford, in Devon, in the southwest of England. So we talked a little bit about granaries and uh, you can see often in English churches, in churchyards, the, um, the granary stones. And this one's particularly beautiful, uh, used up to 1920 apparently. So here we have a commemorative stone that uh, celebrates, if you could call it celebrate, the invasion of the Danes uh, of uh, Lidford village. And you can see the, uh, the axe and the, and the um, shield above there. And it says, Linden Ford, uh, quite wonderful. Uh, Lidford's bloody past and our constant struggle with invaders to our shores. So here's a, a map uh, of the village just to give you some ideas of how all the Sa how the Saxon village was organized in terms of defenses and you can see the pink section in the middle which is the castle which I'm standing in front of right now with the church on the left and then the Norman ringwork which is the second castle which we're gonna have a look at in a minute and then to the right there's the town banks these were built in Saxon times again to protect the village so uh, and also you can see the green striped area above the castle and to the left around the Norman ringwork. This provided a natural protection as well because that's the gorge. And you'll see just how protected that, that is when I get up to the Norman ringwork. Ringwork, that's where I'm going now. approaching the Norman Ringwork Castle and uh, all that's left now really is the ditches and the banks but clearly a very important defence at the time when there was vicious Danes and Vikings around. And it says, this earthwork is all that remains of a small Norman castle which was probably built in the late 11th century in the years of consolidation after the Norman con conquest. It holds a dominant position in the corner of the defended Saxon town. The castle was a ringwork which means a roughly triangular enclosure protected by a high rampart with a deep ditch. The rampart today measures about 3.6 metres high, just over half its original height. It was supported internally with massive wooden posts. Inside the castle were five rectangular buildings with walls of wattle and daub, which is earth. Archaeological excavations have revealed a mass of charred oats and rye, suggesting their use as granaries. 
occupation was short-lived uh, and did not last beyond the mid 12th century. The Norman castle was excavated in the 1960s revealing the footings of five rectangular buildings A to E on the map and evidence of early Anglo-Saxon town bank. Wonderful. Let's have a wander up. Just soak up the energy. You can see if we look down here that this is the deep Lidford Gorge which we're heading towards. So there was natural defence and protection on this side. So now you can see the ditch a little bit better from here. Now when you consider it was built quite a bit higher, had wooden posts and a stockade and five buildings inside. Ah, uh, must have been quite impressive, really. It's truly wonderful. And look at this amazing tree. I wonder how long it's been there. And get a lovely view of the marvellous St. Petrock Church which I've been in and you can see the tower just beyond it. It really is lovely. So as I walk down toward Lidford Gorge which is the last place I'm going to show you on this walk I'll just fill you in with a bit more of its history. It says uh, the Danes made plundering raids when they came up the Tamar River as far as Lidford. It says also in, until the 17th century parishioners from across Dartmoor were brought to Lidford for burial so uh, uh, it was the place to come for burials for those people who lived on the moor. There was apparently a path used for this final journey and it was known as the Lynch Way. I'm not sure where that path is, but I expect someone knows and has traced where it was. And Lidford was an administrative centre. It had what they called the forest courts. Uh, and forest law was brought in by William the Conqueror. Uh, he was a lover of hunting and established the law to protect the game and the animals and their habitat. So Dartmoor must have looked like a very different place in those times, a rich forest full of game animals. There's also a story about the Gubbins Band. They were a group of sheep stealers, beggars, cut purses, that's a great term, isn't it? Cut purses, uh, and cut throats and highwaymen who operated in and around it for around the time of the English Civil War. Their leader, Roger Rowe, was characterised at the time as a black-hearted villain. You could say the Robin Hood of Dartmoor. Isn't that great? So here is the first look at Lidford Gorge. And you can see the depth and you can hear the sound of the water already. I'm going to see if it's open and whether I can get down there. And here's a view down the gorge from the other side of the bridge. Uh, you can see how far down it goes. Uh, but I want to get down, uh, if I can, if it's open, and show you the gorge at close hand. Let's see if I can do that. Well, it seems that the main entrance to the gorge is closed. We are in COVID times. 
can't rely on anything being normal or consistent. But there was a sign there saying that I can get into the gorge at the waterfall entrance. And actually the waterfall is what I wanted to show you. Anyway, so I've got a mile to walk to get to that. So here we are. I'm just about to start the, the walk down to the Lidford Gorge and uh, the waterfall. Already we've got something of interest to point out to you. This is an old railway bridge and um, I haven't done research on which railway this was but the bridges that were built for the railways in the Victorian times were incredible and still here today just as strong and solid as they were when they were built which we can't say is the case with a lot of things that are built today lovely view through there we're blessed with some sunshine and you can hear the water and because we've had very little rain over the last two or three weeks it's probably not going to be as spectacular as it would have been if we'd um, had a lot of rainfall and the river levels were high but nevertheless I hope you're going to enjoy this as much as I am a lovely view across the forest there and uh, still brown from winter and soon enough all of that will green up as we get into the into the early part of the summer well, I've been walking down the hillside on this kind of rough path and I'm sort of getting down now to the level of the gorge itself it's really quite peaceful and tranquil here no people around as I've decided to get here early And I'm heading up to the waterfall now. Little mad man made toadstool with, um, and I've seen this before, coins pushed into the toadstool kind of human architecture it's just lovely A raven or a crow calling out to me. Hello. Kind of following me along the river bank. There you are. 
I wonder if that's a spirit. I wonder if that's a messenger. There she goes. Oh, what do we have here? Kind of a little grotto. So this was a drilled tunnel. Uh, and a disused mine shaft it goes back to the 1700s and there were supposed to be mechanical drill marks near the entrance which indicate the shaft was worked as recently as the Second World War. Interesting. The shaft is the longest in the gorge believed to have been an exploratory working for copper whilst other mines in the local dark area included Wheel Betsy uh, lead tin, tin of course, silver, arsenic, uh, and they did tin streaming here, which I guess in America they'd call hand panning. Well, it looks like we're heading for a rope bridge here. Here's a massive piece of timber which makes a nice kind of guardrail. Really quite quite close to the river now. Here we have what I wanted to show you as the kind of grand finale of this walk. How about that? A kind of very, very small version of Niagara Falls. Well, that would be a stretch, wouldn't it? But as beautiful. from this uh, this kind of rock formation wonderful striated rocks very damp and mossy most of the time but uh, oh god the 
beauty of this and the entangled ivy on the fallen bough. The trickling of water down through the rocks. Bird song. I mean, really, does it get any better? <laughs>